DallasSparky.com. We got Arizona State football coming your way. He's Blaine McCormick. I'm Troy Lynch. And Blaine, might I say, you brought the tie game strong <laughs> once again. American flag bow tie. Not you bad. It. You got it. And I mean, Arizona State playing UCLA on Veterans Day, so Ooh, I figured why call. not debut the American tie bow tie. Speaking of debuts, Arizona State's uniforms last week. I don't know if Fire. you saw them, but mm. so good. Well, let's talk about their debut with these highlights. Arizona State donning the Brotherhood uniforms in honor of Pat Tillman and past veterans as they face the Colorado Buffaloes in this Pac-12 matchup. Let's take it to the second quarter as Steven Montez hands it off to his man Philip Lindsay, skipping on into the end zone for the six-yard touchdown run. Buffs would be up 10-0 at this point, but Manny Wilkins would respond with a touchdown pass over to Nikhil Harry. 20 yards on the throw and Nikhil getting up, saluting the fans. Pretty common for it. These fans going bananas, but they would go even more crazy over this play as Philip Lindsay in for the one yard touchdown run. 17 to seven Colorado at this point. We've heard this before, right before halftime. Wilkins over to Kyle Williams. Not a Hail Mary, but a heck of a catch as well. 25 yards on the passing touchdown. And then the third quarter, Montez would get into the passing game as well, and he delivered on this one. A dime over to Shea Fields, coming down with it and into the end zone, making, the, uh, making Colorado run away with this one at first. But then Demario Richard responds with a touchdown of his own, five yards into the end zone, and he had a heck of a game as well. But who else had a heck of a game? Eno Benjamin. And he's going in this like a bop it. Ready? Push it. Twist it. Pull it. <laughs> Dive it into the end zone. Gets the touchdown, the first one of his young freshman career. And then Demario Richard, you mentioned him before. Look at this fan. He's crazy. Oh, my gosh. I mentioned Demario Richard. Here's the play that I want to show you, Troy. Finding the hole and running away from it. Look at the speed of him going down. 63 yards on this play before he gets brought down. And then a touchdown to cap it all off from who else but Manny Wilkins getting on into, into the end zone and making the score 41 to 30, and that would put the game out of reach. ASU wins this one over Colorado as they go to UCLA next week. So the jerseys were a major talking point, but so was that fourth quarter. And to expand on that, we bring in Austin Burnett and Max Madden. Guys, that was fun. And I mean, not just because there were so many scores or so many big plays, but even if you're not a college football fan, you just got to appreciate that. Was this the best fourth quarter that Arizona State had this season? Oh, absolutely, Blaine. They dropped 191, 191 rush yards in that final segment. Wow. They held the Buffaloes to negative four yards on nine carries, and it went three of four on, on third down, excuse me. So, I mean, that is about as, as textbook as it gets in terms of putting a game away and putting the team away. There was a lot of scoring in that quarter, but statistically, the Sun Devils were dominant. Yeah, and Max really nailed the, uh, put the nail on the head right there. And uh, what, more, what more can you say? The Sun Devils executed, again, on third down, uh, on the home stretch of the game right there and they really stopped Philip Lindsay they which they failed to do over the course of the of the first three quarters but they really nailed down and focused in on him and which obviously he's one of the best running backs in the Pac-12 mm -hmm. so obviously king on him was a big uh, big course in the, in the victory on Saturday you mentioned Philip Lindsay and he like you said was coming into this game third ranked in the nation in terms of rushing yards but the Sun Devil defense held him to just 80 yards they did give up two touchdowns for him though what was it about this defense, Austin, that really was able to stop him? Because Arizona State's defense was known for kind of getting run over. Well, what I really think it is, it's ever since the Washington game, their front seven has stepped up tremendously. Early on in the season, they were giving up a lot of, a lot of long runs, but over the course of the season, in this latter part of the season, they have stepped up tremendously. And not only them, the defensive backs too. You know, you mentioned uh, Kobe Williams and just the whole secondary in general has really stepped up a lot. Yeah, in terms of stopping the run game, there's a lot of action from Christian Sam, who had 12 tackles in that game. Also, Chase Lucas was somehow instrumental in stopping the run. He also had 12 tackles in that game. They were getting a lot of interior pressure from Tayshawn Smallwood and Rennell Wren. That's really what did it. I mean, Philip Lindsay came into this game averaging 139 yards uh, on the ground, and he ended just 23 for 80. I think that's somewhere around three and a half yards per carry. That's a victory for the ASU defense. Guys, you mentioned the corners, and it's kind of unusual to see them really stop a running back because they're no more known for pass coverage and stuff. Speaking of pass coverage, Josh Rosen is who they're facing this weekend against UCLA. 
And Josh is an incredible quarterback. I mean, he's one of those that is really talked about in college football. Him and Sam Darnold, and against the USC Trojans, Darnold ran over this uh, ASU defense with all of his long passes. Do you expect Rosen to have the same kind of resume in this game? Well, what Darnold was able to do was escape the pocket and make a lot of throws outside of the pocket. Rosen is probably not going to be able to do that as much due to his injury and also the concussion. We'll see like where his mentality is at. Uh, but also, the, the Bruins are down to their third string wide receiver on the outside. So that is going to be a big plus for ASU. We'll see if Chase Lucas and Kobe Williams can rebound from a couple bad games. That game against Colorado could have been a lot worse if they didn't drop as many passes. Yeah, absolutely. And I think Josh Rosen is the best quarterback that ASU will see over this course of this season. Uh, over the first eight weeks of this season, Josh Rosen led the nation in the mo for the most passing yards in the country wow. so yeah uh, but uh, I think Josh Rosen he's gonna I think he's gonna have a heyday with his ASU defense all right well we'll see how big the passing game is gonna be in effect as the Bruins take on the Sun Devils Saturday night guys thanks so much for being here on the show yep this might be a bit premature, and this is just my take, but junior linebacker Christian Sam could be the best defensive player that has come through the Arizona State program. Throughout ASU's history, there have only been seven defensive players that have been named consensus All-Americans, and Sam is on his way to make it eight. The Texas product currently leads the Pac-12 in total tackles, and it's not close with 95. 64 of them have been solo tackles, which is third in the country. I know there are at least three more games left in the season, but it's obvious that the Sun Devils are a different team with Sam. The team felt his absence in 2016 when he had to sit out the entire season after injuring his right foot in the season opener. That year, the Sun Devils had the worst defense in the country and lost the last six games of the season. Sam hasn't missed a game in 2017 and has led Arizona State to wins over former number five Washington, number 24 Oregon, and Utah. All teams that ASU lost to last year. Not to mention that in the last seven games, Sam has recorded 10 or more tackles. No player since the year 2000 has more than six games with that stat line, making Sam one of the most dominant linebackers in the country and one of the best in Arizona State history. Well, Christian Sam, he's a guy that really shines on the field, but I think you and I shine in the studio, and oh. it's mostly because of the lights. It's so lit in here. It's crazy. <laughs> <But> <laughs> one of our favorite segments that we like to display our talents mm. on is pros and cons, where Troy and I talk about the ups and downs of Sun Devil football. I've got the cons for this week. He's got the pros, so I'll start it off. Uh, Troy, can you tell me where Kalen Balaj is? Not at this moment, but like where he has been all season. I know he was out with an illness uh, two games ago, and he's had some health issues for sure. Sure. But his his numbers have been down. He had a great year last year. I mean, he, remember the Texas Tech game? Yeah, it was, it was incredible. Eight touchdowns. Eight touchdowns. And I mean, the guy has been a formidable running back the whole time that he's been here. But in his senior season, he hasn't lived up to the expectations. I hope that he gets better. Like, I, I'm not talking down the guy. Yeah. But still a freak athlete, no doubt he about is. that. He, I think he was overhyped at the beginning of the season. That's just my personal opinion, but I still think he could be an NFL running back one day. But it's okay if Kalen Balaj isn't in because Eno Benjamin is coming out of his shell That's right. and he's proving to be a star that he is. He's only a freshman, but against Colorado, he had five carries, 52 yards, and he had that rumbling, bumbling, stumbling touchdown that he said <laughs> B button twice, using that spin move to his advantage. And Eno Benjamin, it, the future is looking very bright for this Sun Devil running game after Demario Richard and Kalen Balaj are gone because he is legit. The later future is <clears> looking <throat> bright for this Sun Devil team with the run game. The immediate future with the Sun Devil run game defense is looking pretty dark right mm. now, though. Mm. I mean, they gave up 345 yards to a team that was now last in the Pac-12 South standings. That doesn't bode well for the defense. Now they got to go up against a guy named Josh <laughs> Rosen. I think you've heard of him. Oh, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> and I mean, he's one of the best quarterbacks in college football right now, and he's got an arm cannon, yeah. all right? So what are they going to do against him? I don't think they're going to be able to match up against this talented of a quarterback. I I agree with you in that sense. I do agree that Josh Rosen is the best quarterback that they're going to go up against. But they have been through almost every single scenario. And that leads into my second pro. They've been through every situation. And sure. they, had a, they finally had a comeback win, which is something that we haven't seen. Almost did it against TTU. But there are so many good quarterbacks in the Pac-12, so many good running backs that they've gone up against. This isn't new for them. And if you ask any of the players, they'll be like, 
it's just another day in the office. And UCLA's defense is so bad that I think that they can make up for how good this UCLA offense is. And to be completely honest, this ASU team has been through every single scenario. They've been blown out. They've blown out teams. They've had other teams try to come back against them. They've come back against other teams. So they've basically gone through everything that they need to to be prepared for every game. Another scenario that I want to <clears throat> present at you okay. is the fact that the fan attendance has been <laughs> Again? Well, You're bringing I, it up again? I'm bringing it up again okay. because at the, Colorado, at the Colorado game, it looked like the stands were only half full. And I mean, sure, coming off a big loss to USC, that doesn't bode well with fans and they're like, well, maybe I don't want to go to these games anymore yeah. where if I'm paying this amount of dollars, I don't mm. want to see the team get blown out. Right, but right. come on, they're going up against a team that was last or close to last at the time when they faced them. I mean, that's got to be a good thing to go to. And if you're going to go to a game, you also see Philip Lindsay. He's third in the nation uh, at rushing For yards rushing at, this yards, point, yeah. at this point. So if anything, like go to see him yeah. or something. But you know, guys, you got to get out there and you got to support your team if you want your team to win. I know they got a couple of road games coming up. Then they got the Territorial Cup. We'll see what the ultimate deciding factor for my point on the fans is for that game. Yeah, but my last pro is that their future schedule is very bright. That's true. UCLA got demolished by Utah, who was previously last in the Pac-12 South, 48 to 17, which is the same score that ASU got blown out against USC. That's right. So it was a bad game for the Bruins. Granted, Josh Rosen did not play. He will be playing against Arizona State if there are no setbacks, but it's going to be an interesting one. After that, they go up to Corvallis. Yes, it's a road game, but the Beavers have not won a game in conference play. Granted, they took Stanford. It was pretty close, but they still lost. And then after that, now we know Arizona State is beatable. Khalil Tate, they have time to figure out how he operates. And what we saw against Washington, if they have enough time to study a team, they can beat almost anybody. I'm not saying anybody. What about Bama? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Bama and Georgia, we'll, we'll kind of see. But those are the pros and cons. We have one more pro, though. Oh, We're going to oh. flip it back to Blaine's uh. bow tie game. This time. It's not oh, made man. of alpaca, but it is made of pure American blood. Look at that. God bless America. And God bless you, Blaine. Thanks Thank so you. much for bringing your bow tie game so strong. But that's it for pros and cons. We're going to bring in Julian Paras because he has a more with Around the Pac-12. Thanks, guys. And we're about halfway through the college season, and there was so much to look at and so little time. So to start things off, number 25 Washington State surged past number 18 Stanford in a close win on Saturday. The final score was 24 to 21 as quarterback Luke Falk had a slingshot for an arm, throwing for 337 yards and three touchdowns. Not only that, but he also became the Pac-12's all-time passing yards leader, surpassing former Oregon State QB Sean Mannion with 13,600 yards. And speaking of records being broken, Washington's Dante Pettis became the NCAA leader in punt return touchdowns with nine, with their bulldozing 38 to three win over Oregon. Huskies QB Jake Browning threw for 204 yards and two touchdowns, and running back Miles Gaskin picked up 123 yards on the ground and a TD. In addition, the number 12 Huskies as a team recorded 451 total yards Saturday night, almost double the yards that the Oregon Ducks picked up with 278 total yards. Finally, the one-two punch of USC's quarterback Sam Darnold and running back Ronald Jones was too much for the Arizona Wildcats. Punch number one Sam Darnold had a 77% completion rating, throwing 20 for 26 and two touchdowns. Punch number two Jones ran for 194 yards and three touchdowns. The Trojans recorded a staggering 642 total yards on the night, and if that sounds like it's a lot, it's because it is. The Trojans now sit on an eight and two record on the season and are still on top of the Pac-12 South. That wraps up another segment of this week's Around the Pac-12. And once again, thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Julian. Now, there are a lot of areas in the Pac-12 South that can go up and down, but that's what college football is all about. For USC, they're going up against Colorado this weekend, and they are now ranked 15th in the nation. Definitely a clear favorite to win the Pac-12 South as they sit with their 8-2 record. And Colorado, they're sitting at 500. Now, looking at the Wildcats, they are coming off a loss to the Trojans and will be hosting Oregon State, who is last in the Pac-12 North. And you've probably heard of this guy, Khalil Tate. He's now one of 16 semifinalists for the Davey O'Brien Award and is one of four sophomores on that list as well. This will be an interesting matchup because Arizona State has to face these two teams later in the season. Now let's bring it back to ASU. 
We always talk about shining players, but what about the ones who show promise? Eno Benjamin showed that potential as he racked up his first touchdown of his true freshman career. Fans know who Demario Richard and Kalen Balaj are, but don't forget about Benjamin. By the time the year is done, both Richard and Balaj are bye-bye, and Benjamin will be looked to take the snaps. When asked on Tuesday about the future, he said that he and Traylon Smith have a lot to bring, and there's a lot to look forward to. On Saturday, Sun Devil fans looked forward to a touchdown to put Arizona State ahead, and Benjamin delivered. Now, you'll always remember your first touchdown, and here's how it went down from the man himself. So I just remember hitting the, the hole full speed, and there was a linebacker there, and I knew I couldn't get to the outside of him. Um, so it's just like, hey, let me just give this thing a little spin. And, um, and from there, honestly, I couldn't tell you what happened. I think God just took the rest of the way. Thanks so much, Blaine. The feel-good stories just keep getting better and better each week. And I love seeing rookies getting into the spotlight, but we bring a veteran into the spotlight again. Josiah Destin, one of our best analysts on the show, and he has some film to break down for us. UCLA, that's Arizona State's next opponent. It's going to be a good one. Josh Rosen projected to be back if they're no longer setbacks. He didn't play last week against Utah, and the Bruins got blown out. But Rosen, arguably one of the best Pac-12 quarterbacks, almost averaging 340 yards through the air a game. Why has he been so good? Yeah, I mean, Troy, even though he didn't play half of last season, there's a reason why this guy's projected to be the number one quarterback in his draft class. And mm -hmm. really what stands out to me is his aggressiveness, um, his arm strength, and then his accuracy. Right. And that's really what I want to hone in on right here with this play. So here we go, UCLA, only down a touchdown to Washington. There's Darren Andrews. That's the main receiver that Rosen wants to throw to. But... He's not going to end up doing that. He's going to end up throwing to Christian Pabico, who's way down the field, 14 yards. And look at this. We're going to slow it down. Ooh. Watching, watching. Fake. Oh, no. Here we go. Pabico open, 14 yards. And that was a dagger right to the chest. So here's another play. And there's Darren Andrews once again, main number one receiver. That's his target. And then they're going to do a little play action, which UCLA did on the last play. So that's something the Sun Devils are going to have to watch out for. Rosen unloads on his back foot. Almost a 60-yard pass in Troy, right on the money oh to gosh. Andrews. What a pass. Beautiful. What a play. But guess what? He actually drops the ball. So, oh I mean, my. I Are you really, kidding me? I couldn't really find the highlight where he catches one. But, I mean, look at this pass again. Oh, no. Right on the money. A Nearly a 60-yard pass. And Rosen, he has that arm strength that we really talked about. So, obviously, Rosen in this Bruins offense, positive light for this UCLA team. But the negative light shines almost just as bright because they're just that bad. They're one of the worst in the conference right now. And they almost give up 490 yards a game to opposing yes. offenses. How? I mean, gosh, <laughs> Troy, almost 300 yards, more than 300 yards actually on the run per game. I mean, they only got five interceptions, which is the least in the Pac-12. ASU almost had four interceptions in, in one game. game. So, yeah. I mean, let's just take a look at, at another play where, where UCLA – Ineffective. So let's look at this. Utah, that's a running back off to the left. That is actually Mr. McCormick, Troy McCormick, that what? is. Another receiver is going to come in crashing, and that's going to cause some confusion between this UCLA defense. McCormick does that real route outside. There's the receiver crash. Look at that. Three safeties, linebackers. I don't even know what it is. Yes. McCormick. Yes. Open. Look at him, 75 yards to the house, and that's just a huge miscommunication there from UCLA. Touchdown, Utes. This is a play where UCLA is going up against the run, and a defensive end actually just moved right there, creating some space for Moss to just go huh. right through the middle. Okay. <laughs> and, I mean, it's a pretty big hole, Troy. Bold move. One linebacker, he's going to come to the left. The other one, he's going to end up going to the right. And UCLA, we talked about 300 yards per game. Look at that. Moss up oh. the middle into the end zone. And, Troy, he is eaten because that UCLA defense it's not really great. So bottom line, UCLA offense good, UCLA defense bad. It should be an interesting game. This is a must win for Arizona State. How do you see this game playing out? Man, Troy, I mean, I see a lot of offense, especially if Rosen plays. If Rosen mm -hmm. doesn't play, it's going to be a little good different. Point. But if he plays, I'm thinking 40s. Uh, I'm actually going to put him in 30s, though. Let's go high 30s. 39, 35 ASU. On okay. the road, All pulls right. it out. It should Bowl be a good one. one. Well, it depends how Arizona State's defense oh, plays. Oh, 100%. Yeah, if we get a UCL or USC performance, could be bad. But if you get a Washington performance, Rosen might be uh, in for some trouble. So, But Josiah, thanks again for being on the show. Now, that was Arizona State 
This week, now let's talk about the latter half of Arizona State's schedule. After UCLA, the Sun Devils travel up to Corvallis to take on the Beavers, who have yet to win a game since September 2nd. ASU should rack up a win this week and the next, but it's that last game that should be fun. Arizona was just dropped out of the top 25 after losing to number 11 USC, so the Wildcats are beatable with quarterback Khalil Tate, but the potential Heisman candidate is must-watch TV and should be a crazy game when they come to Tempe. Top playtime in Pullman, KJ Costello picks up his own fumble and has daylight. Goes into the end zone for the touchdown. You don't see that every single day, but I have a name for this. It's called the stop, the drop, and run like hell. Picks up his own dribble and a lay in a touchdown, but WSU wins 24-21. A little bit of a basketball play on that one. Hey, let's take you into Washington as Levin Coleman gets the pass and then is taken down. Just kidding, Troy. What? He rolled over and goes into the end zone for the touchdown. Let's take another look at this. He gets the Oregon defender, wraps him up, brings him down, but nothing touches the turf. Only his hand, and he's able to go in. Washington wins this one. Top play goes to Theo Howard, who loves Spider-Man, because that's the only way he caught this pass. Are you kidding me? Change his name to Theo. How on earth did he catch that? Sticky hands and feather feet, able to stay in bounds for the 26-yard pickup, but Utah wins 48-17. to Blaine. By far one of the craziest catches I've ever seen. A player of the year candidate, no doubt about it. You think you can make that kind of catch? I don't know, man. That takes a lot of skill to just bend like that and just grab it out of midair. That's true, but I think I have that kind of skill. Okay. Let's test okay. this out. Hit okay. me! Oh, Ooh. Odell with the front flip. Oh, oh, let's go. That was pretty cool. I love I it. I like that. Oh, we're gonna, yes. We're just going to end the show right there mm. before we do anything else. All right. Nothing so, else. So, good job, Troy. Good <laughs> job on the catch and the flip. He's Troy Lynch. I'm Blaine McCormick. Thank you so much for tuning in to House of Sparky's football show. And UCLA, ASU, coming up next.